index t 1 to until 336 we have 336 dates okay and here we have everywhere the return entries for each of these vectors okay so again what we do is we draw randomly with replacement again one of these lines with probability p is 1 over t and t is 636 so it's probability 1 over 636 we draw randomly a row let's say in the first run we draw row number seven we put it here and this becomes our row number one in our in sample okay so we know we have here the math factor we have the probability factor r m w o and we have the probability factor r m w c so let's say we take the seventh row from here put it here uh, we remember this is the seventh row from the original data sample in the next run it, it's maybe we take row number i don't know 500 this becomes row number 500 from here becomes basically row number two then in our in sample data matrix and so on so we have to uh, and this simulation it will stop at row 635 and why we do that you will figure out very soon so this in sample data matrix has only half of the number of observations so we have 318 318 it stops here and it could be maybe the last row here row around 318 and the in sample data matrix is maybe row number 635 in our full sample or in our actual data matrix so this may be this is maybe row 635 so why does it stop why is its observation 635 the last observation that we can draw so the reason is they construct the out of sample matrix in such a way Now again, let's just get our factor straight here, t index, mkt for the market factor, rm, wo for the operating probability factor, rm, wc for the cash probability factor. So the reason is that they use the observation that follows the row that follows in the original data matrix is the corresponding row here in the uh, all of sample data matrix OS. So if our first row in the in sample data matrix is the seventh row in the original data matrix, then our first row in the all of sample matrix is the eighth row of the original data sample so we take always the row that follows so the second row obviously in our other sample matrix must be row number 501 in our original data sample let's do it also in green 501 because the second observation in our the simulated inside data matrix corresponds to row 500 in, in the original data sample. So we always take the row that follows. That's why the last row, row 318, 318 in our sample matrix is correspondingly the last row in the original data sample because it's row 635 in the in sample. 
So hopefully you understand this principle. So, because they estimate, now they estimate the sharp ratio or the maximum squared sharp ratio using the in sample. So you get basically for the in sample simulation, you can estimate again the maximum squared sharp ratio is maximum yeah, the port corresponding portfolio um, minus the risk free rate divided by the corresponding uh, sigma the, the risk and you get the corresponding weights the estimated weights so we have let's say we have um, if we take if you want to compare compound the maximum square sharp ratio for operating profitability and the market factor we get two weights okay the weight w hat one the corresponding optimal weight for the market portfolio and you get we get w hat two which is the optimal weight for the operating profitability factor yeah? so we keep these weights constant and run the maximum square sharp ratio for the out of sample data matrix using these weights. Yeah? Estimating the sharp ratio for given this data sample here, but using the weights from here that we have estimated by the in sample, using the in sample data. So we do that because. Um, as we already said, using uh, that the full sample simulation is biased, and this bias obviously is broken by by using this procedure. Yeah? And of course, this procedure somehow um, involves that we have no auto correlation. Yeah? This is that the that the uh, that the time series here are free of auto correlation. Okay, because what we actually what we actually do is here pairs bootstrapping, right? We take the whole the whole pair, the whole row, yeah? randomly put it here, and take the follow up row and put it here. So what we actually do is pairs bootstrapping twice. Yeah? And if we have no serial correlation, this 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 procedure here works very well. Okay. Given that we don't have autocorrelation in the data, we can do that. And um, you, what we will see when we go through the tables in the paper, that the maximum square sharp ratio is much, much lower for the out-of-sample data than it is for the in-sample data. Okay? So we see a huge difference here. But what we will also see is that the um, rejection frequencies are very similar. So irrespective if we use... So we basically make the same decision um, we would choose the same model using this in and out of sample simulation compared to a full sample simulation. But we will go through that, of course, more in detail when we talk uh, about this paper. So these are basically methods that you can easily implement using uh, a matrix algebra, algebra program such as MATLAB or R. Um, I'm not sure it maybe works even in, in Excel, I'm not sure about that, I don't think so, but who knows, some people are geniuses in, in Excel. Um, I do this uh, usually in uh, MATLAB, and also the MATLAB course that I offer this term also, basically, maybe we will also do some bootstrapping, I'm not 100% sure about the content, but for sure, uh, the course that I will teach next spring, there we will do bootstrapping. And we will do many of these uh, methods and more sophisticated methods as well because one concern or my concern, my, one of my concerns with this paper here from Farm and French is that um, we have uh, dependencies, fact, factor dependencies, okay, so we, what we see is we see that uh, we have autocorrelation, at least weak autocorrelation, but significant autocorrelation 
uh, in factor data. Yeah? So if you read uh, a paper um, about factor momentum, it's, I think it's still a working paper, but there's also one published paper in the Journal of Portfolio Management dealing with factor momentum, basically claiming that we have serial correlation um, in these risk factors. But if we have serial correlation in these risk factors, then this bootstrap approach might be not accurate. This is basically my, my concern. What you would need basically, or how you could basically solve this problem is using an, 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 another type of bootstrapping um, which takes you actually blocks, yeah, where you take randomly blocks of data, uh, put it here, and then basically in the auto seven matrix you would use the uh, blocks that follow the block that you have chosen here in the original data matrix. Okay, so using block block bootstrapping you can basically account for the serial serial correlation um, across these risk factors. And that's of course just an example, so of course these data matrix can be much much bigger and of course you can touch, this is just for simplicity, for illustration purposes, you have of course much much more in their paper, they use of course much much more factors here and uh, the matrix can be, can have uh, how many columns you want, you can investigate how many um, risk factors simultaneously as you want, yeah, the main um, issue is that you take the whole row yeah, the whole pair. Okay, now we have discussed the, the, the main methods that they use in their paper and uh, as you see this uh, took a little bit longer time to go through the methodology and through the idea of this paper but I think um, to my mind this paper is, is very important and knowing that Tama won the Nobel Prize in economics so papers written by Tama in French should be um, it should be definitely in the, in the reading list of, of master level courses because of the importance. Okay, so we what we do next is we go through the tables, and um, I can assure you that uh, other lectures will be less time consuming.